Hi friends! A while ago, I went on a trip to my home country of South Korea with Korean Tourism Organization, and this is part three of my vegan food adventures. Make sure to check out my previous Korea vlogs in Seoul and at a Buddhist temple. Those will be linked below. This time, we went on a journey to the cities of Busan and Gyeongju. Oh, and there will be a little stop in Yeosu as well. First stop was the coastal city of Busan, the second largest city in South Korea. Let's first get some lunch. So we just got to our... the tamnamul pasta so it has linguine mushrooms king oyster mushroom oak pesto oak pesto lemon garlic flakes and fried capers it looks so good and i think tamnamul is like a korean sort of um some sort of plant not really sure but it's like a fusion-y type of dish it looks delicious this one is the Bosari Pasta Bosari. What was the English name for it? I've a for um, blackened pasta. Working. And it looks great. So this one has Bosari, just blackened pesto, enoki mushroom, lotus root chips, and sherba. What the hell, sherba? Time to try. I'm gonna try the kosari pasta first. That's the bracken pasta. Ooh. So kosari is like the root vegetable in Korea. I think only Koreans eat it. That looks so good. Okay. Oh! Oh my god, I eat this. Okay. The bright dirty must be. The tasty? Mm -hmm. It's hot. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised you went for the hottest dish first. No. <laughs> hot is not the problem. What's wrong? Don't do too much of this at once because it's hard to chew. <laughs> but so, it's delicious. Delicious? What does it taste like? It tastes very umami, mm. mushroomy. Um, it tastes definitely like a fusion sort of pasta. Because this is Italian Korean fusion. Mm -hmm. So, yep, yeah, oily. Sounds very. So, I'm gonna do a little lemon action. Do you want lemon? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Babes. That's fine. Okay. Babes. Oh, this is hard to squeeze. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so now we're trying this pasta, which is the chamnamur pasta. Chamnamur, I believe, is some sort of Korean plant. It looks creamy. Whenever we spit it. It looks hot. It looks delicious. Oh, smells cheesy. That's the cheese in life. A lot of food is dead. Don't hide it. Yeah. Lord, did it then? I didn't cook, but I eat with some other sprouts. Hot as well? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everything's hot. Hi, then you got to go with them. This is a crawfall. What percentage of alcohol? 14%. We are trying the crawfall. Croissant waffle. Grab your fork. Bites in the fork. Oh, Okay, I'm just gonna split this. Oh. Oh, it's nice and warm. Or I'm just gonna use my hand. Oh, it's steaming hot. The ice cream's really nice. There's little vegan cheese on top of this. What am I eating? I don't know, Rose. Mm. Can you explain what you're eating? What does it taste like? Yeah, the taste is mild, hot and cold. Let me just taste without the. It's not a super sweet, the, nope. the croissant itself. Mm. Okay. 
After lunch, we explored Gamcheon Culture Village. So this is a village formed by Korean War refugees in the 1950s when thousands of refugees from the Korean War from all over the country began living there. And in 2009, the village was revitalized by local artists and residents with the help of the government to convert the village into a cultural hub. As you can see, all these houses are painted really nicely. There's so much color and it looks so adorable. And walking along the streets, there's tons of shops, cafes, lots of art installations, different things to look at. It's a really cute place to spend an afternoon and a really good place for photos as well. Next, we got to do a really cute sunset yacht ride. Yes, it was actually so beautiful. The skies were so pretty and it was like the perfect kind of weather. Anyways, all the stars were aligned. For dinner, we went to Veggie Narang or Peji Narang. That's how you would say it in Korean, yes. And this is an all vegan restaurant that serves temple style, mostly Korean dishes. This is um, pan soup. So this is a Korean uh, Normally it's made with pork, but it's um, sweet and sour something. So it's deep fried and it's in like a sweet sauce. Very popular in Korea. Normally not in a big salad, but. Do you not want to smoke the name of it? How? Do you know the name of it? Tang Suyo. So, but it, the, the original name is like meat. Uh, it means meat something. But, but so Tang Suyo is like the. Normally they sell it in Korean Chinese restaurants, and again it's like deep fried sweet and sour pork. dinner was so good we were so stuffed and after dinner a few of us decided to venture out so basically as the token korean in this group i had to give the cultural experience of going to korean karaoke Korea is littered with karaoke bars and we found this really random super underground one that was cheap and cheerful just the way I like it. Now let's head to Gyeongju. If you're visiting Korea, try to pay a visit to this absolutely magical city. My hometown actually is right next to Gyeongju. It's called Pohang, which is only about like 30 minute drive away. So I visited Gyeongju a lot when I was a kid. Gyeongju in my opinion is like the Rome of South Korea. It's basically an open air museum and has so many different historical sites and it's kind of like going back in time. It's very, very cool. First stop is Sokkuram Grotto, which is a Buddhist cave temple and you can see a large statue of Buddha. This is classified as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. But first, let's grab a few snacks. We got some dried persimmons and roasted chestnuts for a bunch of us to share. Then very close by is Puguksa, which is a Buddhist temple and this is also a UNESCO World World Heritage Site, and I've visited this place as a child many, many times. So according to Wikipedia, this temple is considered a masterpiece of the golden age of Buddhist art in the Shilla Kingdom, and it was originally completed in the year 770. 774, oh my god. So a very long time ago. And since then, it's been destroyed and restored many, many times. She was burnt to the ground. There were a few invasions and wars. And so she was constantly being torn down. But she got back up again, guys. Needless to say, she's been through a lot. But then she was like, 
Get yourself up and try again, try again. Anyway, now she's looking pretty good and became a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1995 along with Sakura. For lunch, we went to a vegan-friendly restaurant called Sukbu Jengi. That is not easy for you guys to say, is it? Sukbu Jengi. So here we feasted like kings of the Shilla Kingdom. And if you want to try some really traditional Korean food, this is it. Stir fried glass noodles and mushrooms and lotus fruit, perilla seed and assorted mushrooms. There wouldn't be dairy because Korean traditional food doesn't have dairy. The let me one. And then there's some kind of pancake. One place and trying to go next to you. Mm. Oh, what do you mean? We go. You sell it? They jump on it. Yeah, right. Look at it. They do it. This is like incredible. Now it's Very good. traditional yeah. Korean food. I don't know. I don't know if you like this one. <laughs> you don't like the rice cake, you guys? Oh, we'll take it. Yeah. I hope. Mm. Well, it looks really spicy. Mm. 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 Eat it with. Eat it with the veggies. It's less. Uh, the texture is less like um, offensive. Yeah. What? I think it might be perilla leaves, like the one that we had at the temple, the season one. we visited some tombs. Yes, some very large ancient tombs of the kings and nobles of the Shilla kingdom. This area is called the Daerungwon Tomb Complex. Daerungwon. I know, Korean is not easy. You can actually go into one of the tombs called Chong, which houses a whole bunch of artifacts excavated from the tomb, yes. As you can see, there's so much to see in this beautiful city called Gyeongju. It's really magical. So if you like cultural and historical sites, Gyeongju is definitely a must see. I know a lot of people just stay in Seoul when they visit Korea, but try to visit Gyeongju if you have a chance. Korea is a really small country, so it's very easy to get from city to city, so definitely add Gyeongju to the list. All right, now back to the food. Dinner was at Paru. 
Paru. Yes, a fully vegan restaurant serving, you guessed it, Buddhist temple cuisine. As you can see, the best way to find delicious vegan food in Korea is to find temple food. It's like talk. Is it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Get you. That is empty, sorry. Yeah. Okay. But let's okay. do it. I just put it there so you can camera or your, your phone. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we can. Mm. I love the mushroom. Mm -hmm. yeah, really good. This one? What was that thing? This is similar to that acorn salad that you guys had that you just love so much. Mm. <laughs> the acorn one? The jelly? Yes. The wood ear mushroom? And it's only the real. Yeah, but like today when we got the rice, I didn't even eat I didn't eat any of it. Really? I really yeah. like this one. I really like the first one we had the first night. I barely remember that one. Oh, it was good. <laughs> it was so good you were well, we have photos of drinking out of the kettle. Mm -hmm. Yay. And because this is the sweet and sour pork mm. thing. Our favorite. Yeah. So not complaining. Mm. Have you, do you have a recipe for this on the website? I have a recipe for this on my ebook. Hungry are you? <laughs> Normally it's a little more, but that could be good. A little more than this. Let's see. Maybe a little more. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Pop is right. Oh. So you add a bit. Normally a little more, but wow. I already ate a lot. So, okay. And then these are the veggies. Yeah. Yep. Right here. They so use for baby pot. So normally it's spinach, but I don't think this is spinach. And no, I feel like we, we need more, but okay. <laughs> so, little bit, little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay. This, this is bean sprout. Mm -hmm. This is radish. Mu. <laughs> and I don't know what this is. Uh, cabbage. And then this is. Kosari, you know that pasta that we ate, Ryan? Um, it's made of this. It's a root vegetable in Korea. Okay. And this is zucchini. Korean zucchini. Zucchini. Good. And the little other things? And normally, hold on. And then you don't add, the other things are side dishes. Mm. So normally in non-vegan bibimbap, you have like a fried egg or something. I like to put tofu, like a pan fried tofu, but mm -hmm. we don't we don't have it. So, so then you use gochujang. She loves this sauce. Every Korean loves this sauce. This is Korean crack. This is gochujang. Uh, chili pepper paste. You add however much you want. It's spicy, so you know, be careful. Add it in. So normally when they serve it to you in the restaurant, it kind of looks something like I mean it's prettier than this, but yeah. And then you just mix it. Take a spoon. Now we're gonna make it ugly. We're gonna mix it. You kind of have to like mash, mash it, it up and mix it really well so the sauce is dispersed and all the veggies are dispersed. And then you eat it. That's it. Take a bite. Take a bite. Oh God. Okay, hold on. I feel bad. They here. Take this. 
Yeah, we starve it. <laughs> Pour your rice. He licks also the, the soup. Huh? There's the soup coming. No, you don't mix the soup. What's the soup? And not with your bowl no. now? No, 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 don't do that. You eat it separately. Sometimes you, they serve bibimbap with a side of soup, and then you just take some spoonfuls of the soup in between bites. Go for it, eat it. Yay. Oh, have you hidden me? There you go. Ooh. Okay. Cheers! <laughs> oh, the other thing they do in the house. Oh! Yeah, huh? Another fun thing about Korea is that there are so many rest stops along the highways, which is so funny to me because I live in Canada and Korea is so tiny compared to Canada, but Korea has so many more rest stops. The rest stops in Korea usually have lots of snacks, they've got coffee, along with full-on food courts with hearty meals. I found a few snacks that looked accidentally vegan-friendly, like these fried potatoes on a stick and rice cake skewers. And I also saw roasted chestnuts, which are of course vegan. Vegan. We also did a quick stop in Yasu, which is another coastal city, and this was actually my very first time here. We didn't have too much time, but we went to this really cool art museum. Kind of random, but they had some really amazing immersive digital art. It was definitely a really cool experience and very much Instagrammable. Yes. I'm not gonna lie, there were almost no vegan options in this city, but we did find this place called Cheongchun Kimbap. This is a cute, humble, very standard Korean style kimbap shop. And kimbap is one of my favorites. It's kind of known as casual, cheap food in Korea. It's kind of like the Korean version of a sandwich. That's kind of how I like to equate it. Anyway, I do have multiple recipes on how to make vegan kimbap, which I'll link down below. So definitely try it at home. It's so good. Anyway, this vegan kimbap was delicious. So we even got extras to eat later. So I got some to go. Mm -hmm. And after dinner, we just walked around the main area of the city, just explored a little bit. And then we just called it a night. We actually arrived to the city in the evening, so I didn't get a chance to see the city in broad daylight, and it was so beautiful in the morning. And I do wish we had some extra time here, but that means I'll just have to go back. Mm -hmm. And hopefully next time there will be more vegan options. Yes. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed exploring a few different places in South Korea with me. Let me know if you enjoyed this video by giving me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more vegan adventures, vlogs, and recipes. And of course, check out my previous Korea vlogs, which will be linked below. And yes, there are more Korea vlogs coming, so make sure you stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.